This is going to be broadcast on Cheshire TV. It is. It is. All right. Good. Both cans. What's that? Both cans. Nice. Oh, sorry, Joe. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they had enough notice to wind up getting it done or not. <coughs> good. Good.
you have read or obtained the press release, I guess I can begin by just chronologically running through this very quickly and get everyone a sense of what occurred in, in actions that were taken. So uh, on Saturday, October 18th, <coughs> at approximately 1 p.m., this event really began. Um, it began with two large gatherings of folks estimated uh, to be at approximately 1,000 each in each location at uh, different locations near Keene State College uh, off of Winchester Street, one on Wilcox Terrace and the other on Winchester Court. And what occurred with these gatherings initially, uh, especially Winchester Court, were there was some riotous behavior that was occurring on the property relative to a, a large gathering that occurred there. And that included throwing rocks and bottles at one another. And participants in that group uh, were sustaining injuries as a result. And our response really was to try to break that gathering up to get medical services to those folks who were injured. There were a number of uh, injuries and lacerations as a, as a result of, of people in the group being struck by bottles and rocks being thrown by others in the group. Uh, and, and initially, we made an attempt to break that group up. At the same time, we were also getting reports of a large gathering on, on Winchester Court, as I noted, and it was the same behavior that was occurring. A number of these folks were entering backyards of private property. We were called our homeowners to uh, get folks out of their yards and not gather. And, and upon our arrival, we were faced with the same type of behavior people throwing rocks and bottles, now with the police who were responding uh, to deal with it. So as, as reported injuries came in, uh, medical personnel arrived to treat them and were finding it very difficult due to the behaviors that they were experiencing. Uh, the crowds were now directing their attention to law enforcement and other public safety officials. Uh, initially, uh, in order to clear the crowd, uh, there was a dispersal of, of less lethal measures, uh, namely OC spray to try to get the crowd broken up so that those who needed uh, medical attention would get it. And that because of the number of casualties that were starting to line up, uh, the Keene Fire Department set up a mass casualty incident uh, program in the vicinity of, of where this was occurring to provide quick and efficient care of uh, individuals. Uh, it was reported they treated approximately 30 plus people. Uh, we're, we're not clear on the exact numbers at this point. Uh, we know there were many more injuries than that, but those that were treated numbered at 30 plus. And all of the injuries that we had seen were blunt force trauma from being struck by bottles, rocks, or other items. As police attempted to contain the crowd and then disperse it, it started to move through the neighborhoods there. Uh, it moved to the next street over off the court. The same behaviors were occurring. It moved off of, off the court onto Main Street. Uh, on the Winchester Street, I'm sorry, heading towards Main Street, and then it was really contained in the, in the Blake Street, Winchester Street area. Uh, this went on for approximately eight hours. Uh, police were attempting to contain it, to keep it from heading on to Main Street. Uh, they were effective in doing so. Uh, again, dispersal of OC spray, uh, pepper balls, OC pepper balls uh, were utilized try to keep the, the crowd contained and keep it from moving further than where we wanted it to protect uh, further neighborhoods and to protect the main street. As this continued, um, the crowd's behavior continued with throwing items, uh, those of which I've already mentioned to you um, at the police. Uh, it's, uh, on the scene, the incident manager on the scene called for, for additional assistance. We were able to call upon the Hampshire State Police and other law enforcement agencies throughout the state to start coming to assist us to help contain this further. Starting after eight hours, you can imagine uh, the officers on the scene uh, were out there for a long time. They were starting to fatigue, so we got some reinforcements in uh, from all over the state. We were able to contain it and uh, eventually disperse it. Unfortunately, there was some damage that occurred property on Water Street. A fire was set in the middle of the street. Those on scene determined that it was not a threat to structures or, or, or residences in that area, so it was left to burn. Uh, and, and the police teams tried to push the crowds back behind the fire so that it wasn't a danger to them to <coughs> tell you that leading up to this event, uh, there was a collaboration between State College, uh, Police Department, 
Department, uh, City Code Enforcement, Fire Department, and the Andrew State Fire Marshal's Office. Uh, a lot of shine personnel had input into this as far as working with students, communicating with them to, you know, uh, be responsible, to have responsible parties, to do the right things. Uh, that messaging was reinforced weeks leading up to it. Uh, we've worked with landlords who own some of these properties. We've seen large parties in the past. Uh, that message was well received by them as well. Uh, I feel that the collaboration that ensued and the messaging that got out uh, was, was somewhat effective. We felt very good about it. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we, we dealt with some of the swags behavior from outside elements uh, that unfortunately didn't receive the message. And as a result of this incident, uh, we know there's uh, a number of uh, damaged items, like flipped car, uh, Eastside College campus sustained uh, some significant damage. Um, the police department, working with the state police, you know, committed to uh, forming a task force and along with working with Kings State College to investigate uh, these incidents and to bring to justice those who can identify the criminal behaviors they were involved in. And we'll be pursuing that in We have uh, anonymous tip lines uh, at the Kingdom Police Department. We encourage people to go online and submit photos and, and information that assist us in that endeavor. Uh, we've also signed up with uh, large emergency event digital information repository. It's leader, L-E-D-E-I-R dot U-S. Uh, that's a, a website that will allow folks to upload images from their smartphones or other devices into a cloud that will automatically get delivered to us here at the Kingdom investigatory purposes. King State College also has a silent witness program that uh, people can submit anonymously to. We would encourage folks to assist us in identifying those who were involved in riotous behavior damaging our property. I'd also like to note uh, we provided a list of all of those public service agencies, fire and police, and medical personnel that assisted us during this event. I won't go over every name, but I'd like to just mention and correct the fact that we left off uh, the New Hampshire Fire Marshal's office and the Public Works Department. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the Colonel, and I'm happy to answer questions. Colonel. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Thank you. Good afternoon. 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 I'll be brief. I don't think I could uh, give a synopsis of the events any better than the Chief just did. However, what I would like to say is, uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank the chief, thank the town manager, Mr. McClain, the fire chief, the sheriff, uh, who's here today, and uh, any others that were there that night. Um, it was a tremendous effort by all, and um, the city of Keene should be very proud of uh, their, uh, their public safety uh, uh, team that they have. Uh, it was a very difficult night, a difficult event. Um, I witnessed firsthand rocks, bottles, Full bottles, full liquor bottles, full cans of beer, billiard balls being thrown at police officers. The potential for, for injury, serious injury, was there, and we are lucky that nobody was more seriously injured than they were. And again, as they said, uh, there were many, many injuries. But again, uh, it is very hard to train and prepare and plan for an event like this, a crowd like this. Uh, so under it, the most extreme and challenging situations, I don't think it could have ended any better than it did that evening. Uh, I would like to point out um, bringing all these resources together in a common cause like that to deploy, to respond and contain a crowd like that is challenging. And again, it's very hard to reenact and to train and prepare for. Uh, just a few things that I think are important to note. We had... Uh, Special events response team, CERT team, that were there. We had other special units. We had members of our SWAT team there. Why? They had the Kevlar and they had the protective helmets. The helmets were a necessity with so many rocks and bottles being thrown. And getting struck in the head like one of those could be, a, uh, could be lethal in a second. The damage was disturbing. I think that's an understatement. The conduct was disturbing. 